my partner told me that uh, he will contact with our police. No, she's okay. She's and the police will come bye here. Bye. Okay. Jessica, and you've reached the destination. What's up, y'all? Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Jessica. I live in Chongqing, China, and I make videos about traveling and living abroad. So if that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing. In this video, we're not exactly going on a trip, but it's a trip, so buckle up. In my last video about my trip to Beijing, I mentioned that the COVID situation in China is currently complex and severe. At least that's what the text message I got today said. The thing is, I don't think anybody really cares. But just to give some context to what this video is actually about, in case you do care, here's the backstory. Back in 2020, when all of this started, Things never got bad here. In the rest of the world, you guys have all moved on and figured out how to live your lives with the virus still going on. But in China, <laughs> we were living in a COVID-free bubble for two years, till March-ish of this year. People are in lockdown, blah, blah, blah. I don't mean to sound dismissive. The majority of those people were living in a pseudo-China world where they thought that things that go on in the rest of China don't affect them and they got hit with a rude awakening that China battling its biggest surge in COVID cases since the original outbreak in Wuhan. In Shandong, university students seen in long lines for mandatory COVID tests. At a trade fair in Guangzhou, thousands of people seen trying to escape a snap lockdown, some hopping fences after just a single positive case was found among the crowd. Two years into the pandemic, China is still striving to maintain a zero COVID policy. To do so, authorities trace positive cases using big data and surveillance. Any sort of privacy, often sacrificed for health safety. Take this recent case in Beijing. CNN spoke with this woman, Chao Jing, seen here stepping onto her office elevator. CNN is masking the identities of everyone around her. But Chao says building management, following government guidance, released the surveillance footage unedited because they say there was a positive case on the elevator at the same time. To track down everyone, they circulated the images. Chow says even those inside the elevator hours before and hours after were, like her, considered close contacts. She told us all of them now quarantined for 21 days. How can it be me? I never thought it could happen to me. Chow spoke with us from her quarantine hotel. She says once the positive case was confirmed to have been in the elevator, she and her colleagues were immediately locked down at work. She slept on her office desk for the night. Even after testing negative, officials transferred her to the government isolation facility. I don't understand it. I really don't. I feel that my time is wasted. Since confirming its first Omicron case in mid-December, China's average new daily case count has surged from double digits to more than 2,000. Now, with more than 17,000 active cases, the virus has spread to 28 provinces and regions across the mainland. It might not seem like a lot compared to the rest of the world, but for Beijing, one case is one too many. China's bustling financial hub, Shanghai, also increasingly locked down, impacting millions, including us. Just got the community COVID test. You can see they have all the tents set up for everyone, neighborhood by neighborhood, to get tested and then to await the results. This is happening across communities in China. On Chinese social media, some question how long all this will last. When will China change its policy? Many, though, are finding creative ways to deal with the new reality, still managing to squeeze in a haircut in lockdown. And even the elevator close contact, expressing her ultimate understanding of the draconian measures. Because COVID is life-threatening. If my family gets infected because of the government's lack of COVID control measures, I would not be able to accept it. Despite a mostly vaccinated population, Chinese officials are relying on that shared fear of the virus and locking down to justify and enforce its zero COVID policy. 
That's and true. it is that shared fear that brings us to today's video. In addition to this country flipping and reversing Missy Elliott style, the fact that the virus started here, in addition to that, they think, it, they think all new cases came from abroad, even though the borders have been closed since March 28th, 2020. In addition to that, there's also the belief that the virus can attach itself to packages and thus infect people. Now, I know in the beginning, many people were of that belief as well. Many people all around the world were wearing gloves, sanitizing their packages, leaving them outside. Everybody did that at, at a certain point. But I think it has been proven that that is not the case. So when I got this message, I was like, what? In China, your phone number is part of your address. Sometimes, very infrequently, packages show up like this with just my first initial and part of my phone number is blocked out. Usually it's like this with the whole entire phone number exposed. So at the beginning of this dialogue, what we have is a person who has messaged me by saying, I am the community leader for my community. I respond with, hello, what is your position in the community staff? We just got one information that you, one of your parcel is from Shanxi, right? I don't know. You need to check your parcels first. If there was anything wrong with the parcel, it wouldn't arrive here. No. This truth is like this. We have been told that your parcel has been touched by Yuna Express guy who have been diagnosed with C-O-B-I-D underscore one nine. Sorry, I have no idea who you are or what you are talking about. I don't have any parcel here. Sorry, it's package. Sorry for the wrong express. Some time went by and I did not respond. So she says, hello? I give her the okay emoji. You got my thought now, right, Jessica? Place, take action, and give meth. <laughs> Place, take action, and give me the test results. Thanks for your cooperation. There's an important part of this message that isn't screenshot fully. I don't know why. After she said that a ID from Yuda Express touched a package, she said that I need to take two nucleic acid tests and give her the results. She wanted me to take two tests over the course of 48 hours and give her the results. A stranger who messaged me on WeChat with not a real picture. My phone number is attached to my WeChat account, meaning if you type the digits of my phone number into WeChat, it will find me and my account. I usually remove the label from my packages, at least scratch out my phone number at bare minimum before I discard my boxes. But for some reason, probably because it was the day after I returned from Beijing and I was a little tired, I didn't do that. I just discarded my packages without removing anything. So I assume that my new nosy neighbor went through the boxes, found my phone number, typed in a WeChat, and came up with this cockamamie scheme to see my test results. Sounds crazy, but this is China. <laughs> so after this exchange of messages, I blocked her. When she blocks you. Two days later, my phone starts blowing up. It's her. And much to my surprise, she could actually speak English. I simply told her, I don't know what she's talking about and I would not be giving her any test results and to have a good day. I hung up the phone and then I blocked her phone number. It should have been no surprise that when I returned home that evening, the front desk guy immediately alerted her of my arrival to my home and shortly after that, there was a knock at my door. The three people in this video are Karen, or in Chinese, I should say, Karen, the Ba'an, 
front desk guy, security guard, whatever you want to call him. He's the person on duty at the front desk in the evenings. And Karen's daughter. If you are so scared about me having COVID, why would you bring your child? The beginning of the conversation is not recorded because silly me, I didn't anticipate this like I should have. But basically, the part that's not recorded is just the back and forth about me blocking her. <laughs> the main part of the conversation is this. Oh, also, before I started recording this, I told her if she wanted to see my results, she needed to contact the police and that I would show them. Uh, my partner told me that uh, he will contact with our police. Okay. And the police will come bye bye. here. Okay. Um, so I just uh, go uh, of a minute and then uh, when he uh, call the police and we will come here together. Okay. 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 And then you'll bring the people to do the test if you want another test. So you can bring them here and take the test. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that is a good suggestion because uh, it's not a part, our part. So you it's had, I'm part. the only person in this building that had a package. Mm, you are not the only person uh, about two, about, um, I don't know. You are not only You don't one. know? About 21, I think. But uh, it's not uh, all in this department, uh, mm. uh, other place. Other place it doesn't make any mama. sense. Also, packages Shashin don't mama. have the virus. Huh? So the, you should tell the community testing people to come here, bring the test, Take I'll take the test, but I'm not going somewhere to take the test. I've already done that. I've already paid so much money for tests. You, so, you mean that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I would but never... I don't think that's a good suggestion because, you know, if you want the hospital person to come here, it's very uh, not uncomfortable for them, right? It's also inconvenient for me. I've already taken the test, is what I'm telling you. I've already taken my time, my money to go to four hospitals to take the test. So you're so concerned. You can bring them here and have them test me. Okay, I'm, I will tell my staff first. Okay, I have my no problem. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Maybe I will come later. Okay. I, I, can, I, I call my partner first. Okay. Negotiate with me. Of course, I could have just shown her my results, but why? So this woman really thinks that all the way in Shanxi province, that a man who allegedly tested positive for COVID touched a box. That box went on a truck. It drove all the way to Chongqing. Then another man, a different man, touched that same box. He put it onto a tuk-tuk. And then another man, maybe the same man, took the box off the tuk-tuk and put it in a mailbox. And then I touched it. And now, after all of this time, I could possibly be infected with COVID. <laughs> just in a funk about this country and my life in it for the past month. <laughs> I've just been in a bad mood, y'all. So I needed to go outside and get some air because this just put me even more in a bad mood. I was just so annoyed. Like, how dare you? Who do you think you are? If you need to have access to my information, then you would have it. The best thing for me to do feeling like that is to go for a walk. So that's just what I did. And I stayed out probably for like an hour or so. I came back. There were no notes on the door. No sign of anyone being here. Nothing like that. No phone calls from any other numbers that aren't blocked. 
And what was that, two weeks ago? No police ever showed up. You know why? They told Kyren to mind her business. <sighs> the moral of the story is Karens, Karens, they are an epidemic themselves. And it sucks that we have to go through stuff like this, but this is the life we chose, I guess, when we decided to stay here in a post-2020 world. I'm sick of this place, y'all. I'm not even gonna front. I'm gonna make the best of it. There's still some things I want to do, but with many of my friends still in lockdown after two months, people, people have been in lockdown for two months. Not being able to travel outside of the country, not being able to go visit my family. Someone asked me the other day, like, are you gonna come visit America for the summer? And I'm like, huh? What? That's not a thing. It is possible to go through a bunch of hoops and fire and paperwork and possibly, it, depending on where you work, if they're willing to also go through those hoops of fire for you to get on a plane, go to the USA if you can find a flight, and then get on a plane if you can find a flight back to China. The chances of that happening and being affordable are zero. Zero. If you would like to donate to the Bring Jessica Home Fund. <laughs> the other moral to the story is remove your package labels by any means necessary. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. See you at the next destination.